Well, hey, everybody, thank you for watching. This is probably one of the most important podcasts uh, that we've done this year. And I think all the ones that we've done are important. But given what is happening in our country and what is spreading around the world with the racial divide, with the riots and the protests and things like that, uh, this is probably going to be the beginning of some of the most important podcasts of the year. And I want you guys to meet a good friend of mine. Uh, this is Terrence Williams. And Terrence and I ha go way back. Probably, I don't know, you uh, were born in 1897. <laughs> no. But Terrence and I go back at <laughs> least 25 years, I would say. Is that yeah, right, Terrence? Absolutely, yeah. And I'm just going to give my just off-the-cuff bio, and then you're okay. going to get down to the nitty-gritty. But okay. Terrence and I, uh, Terrence, uh, you were a worship leader at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I tapped into your gifts that God has given you, and you and I went around, and you led worship and put together teams, and I would preach, and we led a lot of people to the Lord and yes. a lot of people in worship and introduced the Holy Spirit to an awful lot of people. The Internet comes along, and some of those meetings kind of peeled away, but we've yeah. remained friends. We even mm -hmm. live in the same neighborhood <laughs> here in this area and have uh, lived in this neighborhood. Uh, we have Beth and I for about, I think, eight years now. And uh, you, how long have you lived here? I've been here about mm, 14 years. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I consider you a neighbor. You just live over that way, though, right. a little ways. But Terrence, <laughs> introduce yourself just a little bit more and let's dive right into what we're going to talk about today. All right. Uh, my name's Terrence Williams. I, I've been a worship leader for, gosh, probably going on almost 30 years now. Uh, I've been a pastor. Uh, recently uh, had a church that we transitioned out of. Uh, don't know what God has next for me, but I've been doing that as well. Uh, I bleed, eat, drink, sleep, the kingdom. That is my main conversation. That is my main ideology, uh, the kingdom culture. So I'm, I go by that as a, as far as a ministry tag, kingdom culture ministries. Uh, I also have a worship band that we've developed that we've been doing some meetings, uh, and plan on doing a little bit more. Uh, I, take the opportunity to take full advantage of my ethnicity, to uh, speak to hypocrisy, to speak to the things in culture right now. And, you know, this is a very opportune time uh, for us to be talking uh, because the kingdom is important. The kingdom has gotten lost within the midst of, of all the concentration on ethnic, ethnicity. Uh, the enemies want to bring us, break us back into tribes again. Uh, the white tribe, the black tribe, the Asian tribe, the Hispanic tribe, when the kingdom of God is one, one family, one tribe. And so uh, I'm thrilled about being, uh, well, I'm not thrilled about what's going on, but I'm thrilled to, to sit down and talk with you today. And hopefully we can bring some uh, clarity and some hope and uh, to people around the country right now that don't really know what to make of what's going on. What's really been frustrating to me there's never been an issue with us and we've made so much progress i mean look i grew up in the south in a time when you know it was bad it wasn't as bad as my grandparents era by any stretch but we were at the tail end of it and and you know we've ministered together and we mm -hmm. i'd much rather be sitting here talking about worship and our next meeting that we're going to go out and do yeah. you know that sort of thing but we've been sort of sidelined right now so obviously to our audience who is watching and listening to this, Terrence, we're going to talk about the racism and the riots and all that sort of stuff. And and uh, I, I have to, I wanted to start this way. I was watching, as you have, and everybody has a lot of stuff online. Mm -hmm. And I saw this one pastor uh, who's white, and he was being very, very pious and very humble about how we really just need to listen to black people, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I bet he does. he's not talking about Terrence Williams <laughs> or he's talking about Officer Tatum or Candace Owens. I bet yeah. he's not talking about those black people. No. Now, I don't look, I probably just judged him. God, if I did, please forgive me. <laughs> but, you know, I think I knew what he meant based on some of the other things he said. Mm -hmm. Terrence, before we dive into Black Lives Matter, we Black Panther, Malcolm X, all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. have you or your family ever experienced racism? Uh, me, um, I remember one time, uh, in a store in Waynesboro that, uh, me and another, uh, uh another guy I was friends with at the time, uh, we walked around a, a store and I kind of glanced over my shoulder and saw that we were being followed from a little, a distance. And I just kind of, uh, elbowed my friend and I was like, you know, 
I think we're being followed, you know, being profiled maybe as maybe people who were might steal something, might cause some trouble. Um, that is really the only instance that I can think of uh, that that I've experienced personally. Um, I've had way more heat from my own race than I've ever had from from white from white people. And I know that's not everyone's story. And I'm definitely empathetic towards people who have uh, experienced racism because I'm not here to deny that racism exists. I just don't think it's as widespread and systemic as what uh, the culture and what, what the media is trying to say. Uh, my children, um, being biracial, um, they've heard a few things in school at times. Uh, uh, my second oldest child had a had a had something said to him, you know, along uh, the the N word um, being used, um, and being in a county, you know, you you got a mixture of people, and 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 you you can have that happen. Uh, so yes, we we've, we've experienced it, but the thing is that um, we don't we don't make it a paramount issue. Uh, we realize that everyone has an opportunity. Everyone's a sinner. Everyone can have prejudice in their heart. Uh, I don't, you know, and I'm sure we'll talk about this as well. You know, the term racism is just really casually thrown out today. I believe people, all people struggle with certain prejudices being that they prejudge people based, uh, not based on relationship, but based on assumption, based on stereotypes that are given. Uh, so racism being something that is a systematic, uh, a systematic strategy to, to suppress a, a group of people. I don't think since the sixties that we deal with that in this nation, uh, like, like it is being proposed, like it's being talked again, uh, today. So, um, me, you know, I, I grew up in this area, uh, been here my whole life, except for a few years of college and, my friends are of all races. Uh, I've got tons and tons and tons of white friends. But again, with my kingdom mentality that that I have and how serious I take that, um, I believe in one race is the human race. And so uh, my brothers and sisters are of all different shades and, and, and ethnicities and in languages around the world. My family's huge. I don't narrow myself to, to one, one, one tribe. You ever been called uncle Tom? Yes. <laughs> and, and worse. And, and coon and well, house well, Negro. And, uh, and, um, I, I don't know. There's by whites or blacks. By blacks. <laughs> I mean, I figured that's what it <laughs> yeah. was. Yeah. Since you haven't experienced too much racism, then it's come in reverse. It's come in reverse. And it's based on my stance uh, that I'm very vocal about, very vocal on social media. And whenever I get opportunity to speak or conversation with people, I I let them know, you know, the kingdom that I've been born into, born again into is multicultural, multi-ethnic, multiracial. Uh, that flavors us, but it doesn't define us. And so, you know, we are one blood. You know, the blood of Jesus flows through all of our veins. And so I, I, I look at everyone in that way. Um, I, I never meet a person that doesn't become a brother unless we just don't we, we just don't click for whatever reason. It's definitely not because of race. So in other words, Terrence, of all the years that you and I minister together and known each other, we've never had a fight that I can even remember of any kind. And if we did, it was because you were probably wrong about something and it was <laughs> just kidding or I was, but it had nothing to do with skin color, no. but here's what's happening today. And I want you to jump in and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. Cause mm -hmm. I'm speaking from my perspective. Okay. Um, to the, the term racism generally is if you dislike somebody because of the color of their skin, that's mm -hmm. always what we've been taught. What racism mm -hmm. is now, if you disagree with black lives matter or someone, or a Muslim, or somebody like that. You're a racist if you disagree. Am I off base about that? No, you're not off base. That's the new definition of racism, yeah. right? Yeah, and we we have now, you know, the term cancel cancel culture. We have mob rule. We have groupthink. Uh, those things that if you think differently outside of the group, you know, and you mentioned Candace Owens, you mentioned um, Brandon Tatum, uh, other people like that, uh, Doctor. Uh, uh, Alan West, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, or uh, ben, ben Carson, Carson. you know, people who don't uh, flow with the, the narrative, 
are relegated to uh, to being called. Uh, well, we aren't called racist. We're just called Uncle Tom's uh, because we disagree with the narrative. And so what you're saying, uh, uh, whites that don't go along with uh, the popular narrative are automatically called racist. And that is, uh, you know, we, we, we live in a culture where we used to be able to agree to disagree, shake hands and still fellowship and just know that we don't agree on certain points. Now, disagreeing means ending the relationship or never even really establishing one, just lobbing bombs at each other across the fence because you disagree with their perspective on a certain thing. So we've lost the ability to dialogue. We've lost discourse. Uh, we've lost some of the things that have made this country great. You know, being able to agree to disagree and still have and still be mature about it is is something that's very very important. And we've lost that. We've we've got a very immature generation of people that right now on the earth. About. I would estimate eight years ago, um, and before that, I was I was teaching down at Blue Ridge Community College. I was mm -hmm. teaching IT courses, and there's a Christian club there, and uh, we would hold uh, host a conference. The Christian club would every year. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Jim Wright and I would, and it was to help high school students transition into college. And so we it was always themed around that. So mm -hmm. they when they would come to college, we'd help them make that adjustment. But it was a Christian take on it, you know, how mm -hmm. to also evangelize the campus and all that sort of stuff. And I remember the last one we had, I did a, a, a talk on political correctness. So the, the mm -hmm. idea was, what is political correctness? Where did it come from? I mean, it didn't just appear out of nowhere. So I just did an historical study on political correctness mm -hmm. And, and look, I'm not going to go into too much depth here. In subsequent podcasts, you and I can really take these things, Terrence, and break them down. We'll put notes on the screen here and do mm -hmm. all that. I just want to give the, the two-second version. It's a Marxist movement. It's called cultural Marxism. Mm -hmm. So for the last 50 years, the Marxists have been marching through our institutions here in America, our, particularly the college, and they have been teaching Marxism in the major universities. And what we are seeing now is the manifestation of them eventually now graduating from universities over the years, getting into mm -hmm. high levels of power and uh, that being mayors, you know, being police chiefs. And so they've got this non-Christian worldview that is essentially cultural Marxism, which mm -hmm. comes from Lenin and all those sorts that we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing quite a, much of a revolution. And one of the first tendencies, you have to erase the history of the country. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you're seeing the monuments fall. Mm -hmm. uh, even Abraham Lincoln. I mean, it's gone from it's just the Confederate problem. Yeah. Now they're they're tearing down Abraham Lincoln and others who were against slavery even. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't fit that narrative. So r what we're having here is just a massive revolution of Marxism. And the only ones on television brave enough to actually say it would be Tucker Carlson mm -hmm. and Sean Hannity. Mm -hmm. Now, it's alluded to in some of the other conservative shows, but that is exactly what is happening. So that's my yes. two cents in a nutshell. But I want your take on the current revolution that's that's happened almost overnight. Well, I mean, yeah, cultural Marxism is certainly what we're facing right now. Uh, what we're seeing uh is and it began it, it's it's began even you know in in terms of human relationships as well i mean we've seen it with the sexual uh the the sexual sin where we've have we have this rash of the the need to redefine everything to give new de definitions the term new normal now that we hear so much in society so basically what you're saying and i agree with you that this this erasing of history uh, rather than learning from it and and moving forward with it realizing that you know we're in a fallen world we're in a fallen culture and uh you can't erase everything. I mean, some things, I mean, we know scripture wise that God works together all things for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So some of the things that I did that were bad become part of my testimony. And if we erase those things in society, uh, when you erase history, obviously you're, you're doomed to repeat it. And also what's being, what's being communicated now to future generations uh, is their version of what history was, mm -hmm. uh, who they want to label as 
uh, races, who they want to, what, what movements and what monuments and things they want to remove in order to redefine and reshape uh, the mindset. And that's basically what it is. It's, it's an attack on the mindset of America to change it uh, and, to, and to redefine it. And so that, that's what we're seeing. That, that's what's being attempted uh, by, by, these, by these cultural Marxists.